Those are the people that I'm betting on. And they look like you, right? And they look like me. So, what can we offer these people? What can we do to inspire them? How can we make them household names, really? Zukadek is a Jewish name. It doesn't sound like my name. I mean, your name, Akon, Timi, Femi, Omar, Yaradua. No, those are the names you want to talk about. At least we have one. There's a famous joke that says that someone recently converted to Islam and they were was asked, which name do you want? He gave him all the names. He said, no, he needs one. And what's the name? Dakote. <laughs> so, at least we now have one name that shakes and moves the earth. It's called Gravitas. A name that when you hear it, you're like, oh, at least something is happening on that part of uh, the country. Nothing extraordinary was easy. Everything bold or monumental is always difficult. Easy doesn't make us anything. Difficult is an invitation to the great. Difficult change the world. Difficult create the future. We do difficult. Not for ourselves, but for those yet to come. So that they can try, succeed, fail, try again, and get their invitation to be great. Difficult, bring it on. That is what human energy is. Human energy is the reason man went to the moon. Last thing yesterday was 50, the 50th anniversary of man being on the moon. Difficult is the reason why in the 80s, if you watch some James Bond movies, some things look, you know, it can be done. Today we are doing that. The, the, the things we do for bread and butter. Your Wi Fi of today, some years it don't look like now, nah, it's not possible. The fact that you can transfer money from someone and from the other end of the world, they are getting the money. It used to be possible some years ago to make a phone call international in this country. You have to go to VI. You all <laughs> won't be tiny if you go late, you won't make it. But today, from your phone, you can call anyone, anywhere, any day. And the whole story of personal finance revolves around what I call the cycle of money. The whole thing about money is one, you make it. How do you make it? Job, skills, sell your time. That's making of money. Unfortunately, most people are always trapped at this point. The second part of money, it's called money. Managing it. So that involves your budgeting, your saving, your planning, your what goes where, what doesn't go where. The third phase of money is multiplication. Multiplication is basically about investment. Investment has various forms, but the one I'm most in, interested in is, is venture capitalism. Venture capitalism sounds like big English, but it's not. What it means is simple, and that is people are willing to bet on ideas that people are not interested in. And venture capitalism is the reason you have Google, WhatsApp, most of the tech companies. Why they are in Silicon Valley is not because of anything, it's because the people there are willing to bet on technology. And there are many other things that have come up with venture capitalism. The fourth is ministry, which is you now have the money, you think, what do I do? Okay, in my life, and this is what I want to do with the money. Like Bill Gates, I want to get a cure for malaria, a vaccine for malaria. Oh, okay, I think I want to do X, Y, Z. I think cancer is a big deal to me. I think people in my unit getting an education is a big deal, then you decide to pursue that. So, insulin. How many of us know anything about this drug? Yeah, some of us have parents that take it deep, some of us have children that take it deep. Insulin to me is one of the biggest outcomes of venture capitalism. It was there in the form, but nobody was reading. And for those who did chemistry, you know, there's always the laboratory preparation of hydrogen and there's the commercial preparation of hydrogen. There was the laboratory preparation of insulin, but the commercial preparation was not really there. And then a company called Genetech decided to say, we want to make a batch of this. If we can solve this problem, it's going to help. And then the guy called Sean Peckin decided to put his money with his associates on insulin. The whole story was that they put money, it became successful. IPO in 1981, they had $300 million. By, I think, 2001, when they were selling the company to one of the biggest pharmacies 
it was 47 billion. Think about it. Somebody put down two, three, four, five billion. Even if you want to think about it, there are times. <laughs> and then he got 300 million, and then he got 47 billion. Let me give you what 47 billion is. The whole of Nigeria, with the money we produce, everything is 25 billion dollars. Our budget. Does it put it in perspective? What 47 billion dollars? <laughs> if I have 47 billion dollars, you will like me. <laughs> so, another concept I want to talk about is tipping point. So the whole concept of tipping point is that small things build up and make a big difference. The water in the ocean, there are drops, droplets, but because they have come together, I need a money. And there's a place called Lighthouse. From time to time, I go to Lighthouse and just watch the ocean. It's endless, it's boundless. And the part I like about the ocean is when it's aroused, you know, it's like a night, it comes up out to you. I, I don't get here, I don't know how to swim, I don't bother. I just stay, watch, happy, I go home. My wife likes it for it. <laughs> so, the whole essence of picking is that small things that come and then make a big difference, okay? And the tipping, when things get to a tipping point, they just go the other way. That's how revolutions come together. That's how big things, because people got discontented. You remember the Arab Spring? Yeah, once upon a time, some people got angry. And remember, over trade government. It's not just about social revolutions, but other things. And exponential popularity of things becomes what Malcolm Gladwell calls an epidemic. If you lived in this country when Ebola hit, that was an epidemic. Now let me tell you what epidemic does to people. It makes people irrational. Why? It makes doctors who know that salt cannot cure them take <laughs> salty bath by 4 a.m. That's what epidemics do. You're scared and you're willing to try anything. Okay? And for tipping points so call is that there must be few people that are willing to bet on it. There must be few people that see something differently and decide to take a stake at it. You remember the Pareto principle, 20% of people get 80% of the result. So you have few people. They must have a message in which everyone believes in. So Malcolm Gladwell says you must have a stickiness factor. What makes WhatsApp so popular? The stickiness of WhatsApp is that you can send instant, it gets to people fast, and you can broadcast as many until they limit it. The big thing is the power of context. In what context are we telling the story? Is it negative or positive? All this will come together. Now I said, and when they all come together, they become an epidemic. So I've given you what epidemics in Nigerian context is. ATM. Once upon a time, whoever used an ATM? It took me many years before I could trust those people in my car. I'm Nigerian. It took me many years before. Today, in mobile phones, if you don't have a mobile phone, my grandmother has a mobile phone. Yes, and I'll tell you a little story about it. So I went to see my grandmother. She said, hey, I can't reach you because I don't have a mobile phone. So I bought her a mobile phone. Then I tried reaching her, I can't get her. I get back to the meeting. Grandma, where is the mobile phone? I say, it's in my box. <laughs> don't want anyone to steal it. <laughs> she was more happy with the concept of having a mobile phone than using it. So, human capital. This is the third topic I want to deal on. Human capital is me and you. It is the collective of all what we have, our intelligence, training, judgment, wisdom, experience. And what you do with human capital is that it's unique and we use them to accomplish the goal. So, human capital, intellectual capital, social capital, emotional capital. Let me stay on intellectual capital. Hollywood will always be more. I see juicy, or they will always have more money than all of us. And it's just because people sat down and realized that to make money out of human capital, you need to protect it, you need to give a copyright. Because the works are unique. The works are, you can't replicate them. People must benefit from the things that they have done. And they are inventions, products, processes. Like I told you about the blog in Sudan. Gentech had made so much money from it because why? You couldn't just do it. It was theirs and they had to keep it. So social capital. Social capital, we all have social capital. It's a way of life. One of the ways you know about social capital is about trust, right? 
Social capital is the reason a bank can give you money. Emotional capital is being able to empathize with people, realize that we are all humans. As someone once said, we are looking for the same thing. I remember being in New York one day, I just stood there in Times Square, there was a lot of people moving around. I just want to meet everybody, you know, people trying to get their kids from school. I'm like, this can happen anywhere. People are looking for the same thing. They want their kids to go to school, they want peace, they want to have a good job, they want to pay their bills, and they want a happy and peaceful life, okay? Characteristics of human capital. Look at the picture of there. See, I don't know what you can produce. Let me give you an idea of human capital. Mandela, we all know Mandela, right? But behind Mandela was Albert Cecil Sulu, the Tambo Bergens. There were a lot of people, but someone had to take that human capital to say, no to our fight, no. And then with that, you remember what we said? It always starts with someone, and then it gets to an where the whole country is ready to sacrifice to get to where they were going to. In Africa, 43% of the 1.2 billion of us are under the age of 15. We are called the youngest continent. Now, what do we do with this youngest continent? We can't just be young for young sake. You, you get my point. And the, there's something about young people. Young people don't think about campus like I do. They don't think about diapers. They don't think about cancelling events. But this is what they do. Anything they find their hands to do, they trade well. Yes, that's the beauty of young people. Why? They are not bogged down by so many things. If they say, I want to be a computer engineer, if they can discover it and find the patterns and avenues, they will be the best ever. Let's get this list. Venture capital, tipping point, human capital. This is the idea I'm trying to curate. That let us make the investment in the African youth an epidemic. I'm sure you think I'm talking about them. I'm talking about you and me. I'm talking about things that we can do when we leave here. Okay? What should we better? Values. I'm talking about you telling your children that taking advantage of people is a no-no. That coming back from wherever, your roommates, that hey, I saw this thing with someone, it's now in your hands, and the person say, I stole it, and we all laugh about it. It's a no-no. These are the things we need to better. See, you can have everything, but if you don't have values, uh, you're going to be a self-destructive thing going somewhere. Because something will restrain you from going to the other side of the equation. I want us to bet on education, not just formal education. As he said, informal education is key. There is one thing I see that lacks in our community, especially as black people. You know what it is? Critical thinking. Just sitting down to critically analyze something. Just sitting down to hear the other person's perspective. There is a very famous case that in negotiation is called the orange case. And they said, if there are two people that need an orange, what will you do so that the two people are satisfied? People just jump to say, ha, ah, cut the origin too. Well, is that the right answer? You'd never ask them what they wanted from the origin. And when they asked the two people, what did you want? The other person just wanted the peel of the onion, the orange, to use to make cake. And that person wanted the liquid content of the orange. And there was a third person waiting for, for the, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you get the point. It's because somebody had to sit down and critically think about it. That is something we have. The power of reflection, I wrote an article on video called the Miseducation of Education. Meaning, the sole aim of education is to train the mind. Boston is my favorite city in the US. When I went to Boston, so I went to, I love MIT so much that the day I went to MIT, I was like, wow, is this real? <laughs> I'm serious, I, was, I didn't know whether I was doing this <laughs> in front of MIT. And then I went to the Boston Library, and there's an inscription that I'll never forget. And it says, the Commonwealth, which is, you know, the colony states, requires the education of its citizens for the preservation of liberty and civil rule. What does that mean in context? You need to have a complicated time to even understand the law, to read the law, to understand this. You need an educated mind to have a mother that can give the daughter, the son, drugs in good doses. So, technology, technology and the enabler, we'll hear a lot about it, but we need to bet on it. Health, no matter what you think, if you're not feeling well, you're not going to be productive. Okay, so how do we 
best. This is the crux of the matter. It has to start with yourself. The challenge I'm giving to everyone is that we have to start betting on ourselves. How do you bet on yourself? Is that you can sit down and say, I can do this. This is what I really want to do. Remove everything in front of you and say, this is what I think I can do. If you don't believe yourself, I can't do the believing for yourself. If you, this is one thing we do most of the time. We count ourselves out. You see an application in the newspaper, you refuse to apply. Uh, it's for equity people. It's for the people from. I have applied for things that had nothing to do with me and I was called. And people said, it's partiality. I said, it's not partiality, I applied. And I gave them reasons like, yes, I don't meet this criteria, but hey, look at the other side of me. And I was called for it. Never count yourself out. You need to bet on yourself. You're your greatest asset. The second thing is to bet about around people that around you. You have classmates. There are people who are struggling with their academics. The way to bet on them is to find a way to help them. The way to bet on them is to organize tutorials and, and call them in. See, if you don't create platforms, if, if you don't really go out to people to be able to help them, some people can't even help themselves. So, it's a rally call. We are, in, we are in battle. We have young people that have nothing to do. And that's why when you see young people that with 5,000 are willing to do atrocities that you can never think about, it's because nobody's betting on them. So when they are taking these decisions, there's really nothing. I'm telling you to bet on the next man. I'm telling you to ask your classmates, what's next? Where do you go from here? How can we help this country? For your information, we are in a place, forget about the jobs. I'm sorry, they are not coming. But this is one thing that you can do even while you're here that can stand you up. Look around you and see what solution can I provide. The third thing is to bet on the economy. The problem most times is that we're not invested wherever we are. So when I say betting on you, I'm not just talking about where you have a company and somebody comes and invests money. That's a good part. The part I'm asking for today is just finding out from the next man where are you on your journey. How can I help? And sometimes that help is just that you're listening. And sometimes it's, the help is that, oh, I know this person that does this. Sometimes you have an email that somebody has been looking for, and that's it. The rest will be history. So, who are my audience? As I said, this thing I'm saying is not about them. I'm not talking about the government. No, I'm talking about me and you. Where I work, the number, you know, we came together and we're thinking, what can we do for the society that we live in? And we decided to give some kids scholarship. Those kids today are always, they went to university and meet great through university. These are kids that have nothing, education. This lady, I got into school, and someone introduced us, and she became an angel over me. She was always there. She wanted to know what I was doing, what I was not doing. She was my senior in engineering, so she would, um, she would if we talk and say, oh, do you have this testament for this? No, she would go and scout for the book and break for me. Uche hopes for me. Uche, she was, she was older than me, but and one day I asked her, I said, what is all this about? I really need to know where we are going. <laughs> The attention, uh, uh, those of you that have never had attention from the woman, it, it, it can be overwhelming when you're a 70 year old. <laughs> Sorry, I have nothing to offer. <laughs> but Uche was there, it was, it was not about that. When they stole my money in my ear, too, she was the only person I could tell. Uche wasn't a rich girl, so don't think she had it for How she rallied money and went to actual everybody and gave him money to survive that time. I'm talking to you today because Uche invested on me. She took a bet. She invested in me. It's the same clarion call I'm giving to you. You need to bet on people. The next is really can come out from the people you're sitting with. The next, we're looking for a vaccine from Malaria. It can come out from this room. But you need to encourage that person to take that step. Now, this is a famous quote by Larry, Lawrence Bossidy. Lawrence Bossidy was the CEO of Moneywell, he was one time employee of GE. And he said, I'm convinced that nothing we do is more important than hiring and developing people. At the end of the day, you bet on people and not strategies. Nigeria is where we are because of the people. Let's go back to where we came from. Nothing extraordinary was easy. Everything bold or monumental is always difficult. 
Easy does not make us better at anything. Difficult is an invitation to be great. Difficult changes the world. Difficult creates the future. We do difficult. You do difficult. I do difficult. Not for ourselves, but for those yet to come, so that they can strive, succeed, fail, try again, and get an invitation to be great. Difficult? Bring it on. <laughs>